back again. I've um, been getting a lot of questions on my videos um, about um, a few things on Model 3, so I'll just discuss a couple things about the Model 3 and then I'll get into some of the big ones that seem to be the same questions over and over again. It really has to do with the batteries. So um, Everybody seems to be asking about the possibility of a HUD or a heads-up display since Tesla seems to be removing the speedometers or what we call the binnacle. Um, uh, recent hiring has indicated that they've hired a specialist who does a um, uh, heads-up display. So we'll see whether that uh, that comes to light. I have a feeling they're going to do something very special because that's kind of the way Tesla operates. So, but we won't really see anything until um, till next year at the uh, at the at the second um, product reveal because that's you know generally how they operate. Um, there's a lot of other questions about the center screen on, on the Model 3. That's there to stay. Um, they're not changing it. It's not going to go vertical again. It's definitely horizontal. Um, the user interface that you've seen in some of the uh, videos online with the test drives, it's not finished. This is software. They can change it. It will improve. Um, there was also some questions about whether they're going to do AirPlay or Android Play, um, the, you know, the car interface thing there for cell phones. Um, Tesla has made it very clear that they're not really going to implement that. What they will do is have some kind of like um, a floating window where the phones can project their user interfaces onto the center screen, ostensibly really to um, uh, preserve the, the you know the Tesla um, experience on the screen. So that's really important. So um, that's what I have about Model Three. There's probably some other information I have coming, uh, but I can't re re reveal much uh, yet. Um, if it transpires, you'll be first to know. Um, so there's a few other things that really come up in, in conversations all the time with the videos that people are always about, um, asking about uh, Tesla's quality. Now, um, Tesla's only really been making cars since about 2008, and Model S was a, you know, a, a medium production scale ve vehicle. And they started making that car at the uh, old Numi factory in Fremont, California. It used to be owned by uh, GM and Toyota. And that factory had a capacity of uh, uh, half a million cars a year. So there's plenty of room for them to use um, that factory to grow to, to build the Model 3 production line. Right now they're using about 20% of the space. It's about five and a half million square feet. So they've got lots of room to grow in there. Now, when Tesla started building the Model S in 2012, um, when they first came out, they had some quality issues. Every new car manufacturer has quality issues. Um, every car manufacturer has quality issues. I mean, you just can't get around it. These are complex machines to make. However, because Tesla doesn't build a lot of cars and they sit on dealer lots, um, they're made to order, they can implement changes. On, on, on average, they're making about 20 engineering changes to the vehicle um, every week uh, to improve the vehicle. Um, so, yeah, the quality is certainly... Um, if you ask anybody who's traded in, say, a Model S, say, 2013, or a 2012 model for say a 2016 model, the quality is vastly different. It's it's much much better. So we have um, uh, we have all good indications that Model 3 will be a very high quality car. However, at these volumes, um, you know that's one of the reasons they're starting deliveries say on the West Coast, which is closer to their uh, geographical area for their factory, so that they can if they have any early issues, they can bring them in really quickly rather than you know just send them all out over the world and have to do product recalls. They hate that. So, speaking of product recalls, um, Tesla has had, officially, three product recalls. Um, the very first one happened on a Model S, and that was about uh, three years ago. They had a bit of a problem on a seat latch on the back of the car. That was fixed very quickly. The other one that happened last year was rather interesting. They had a, a seat belt recall. And the seat belt recall uh, came about because there was exactly one report of a seat belt latch um, that came undone in, uh, in Europe. And Instead of recalling almost 100,000 cars, uh, what Tesla did was at, rather interesting. What they did is they sent out technicians out to the superchargers, which is their high-speed uh, charging network stations, and they had a little checklist. So as the cars were coming in to get supercharged, they would do a quick two-minute check on the vehicle's seat belts, and if they didn't detect any problems based on this checklist, they basically said they wrote it off and said, yep, yeah, we're good, and off you go. So they didn't have to replace all the parts. It was just one report, so they're very proactive about it. It's quite, quite interesting. Um, the other one that happened recently was a Model X uh, rear seat recliner problem. It affects about 2,700 vehicles. They're in the process of, of fixing those at the service centers and stuff. So it was relatively minor. Um, but they had one report of those. So, you know, they, they're not messing around with that stuff. They're, uh, they're really being 
um, pretty proactive with that. So how does that affect Model 3 again? Well, we'll have to see. Um, but that's why they're, they're, they're starting production and deliveries on the West Coast and moving east so that they can fix little things like that. So that's, uh, that's what I have to say about you know, the Tesla quality. One of the other questions I got was, um, what about the batteries as far as um, fire prevention, not fire prevention, but um, um, explosions and stuff? Well, um, uh, lithium ion batteries don't really explode. What they do do is, is if they're punctured for whatever reason, they go, they, it's a chemical reaction, it's called thermaline. And the batteries basically puff up, whatever, and then they, they open and then you get a lot of magic blue smoke. Um, but they don't necessarily always, um, you know, explode like a, like a gasoline car would. So having said that, um, back in 2013, um, Tesla had a, a, an unfortunate series, about two or three, uh, within the space of about two weeks, some battery fires that, were, that made a lot of news and so on and so forth. And um, every one of those accidents had happened because um, w when the cars were driving on the highway, um, the drivers couldn't veer out of the way when there was some road debris. And in a couple cases, it was one of those um, trailer hitches that had the three heads on them. Well, anyways, it's about this big. And what had happened is because the car is very low to the ground, um, these trailer hitches that were on the road had gone underneath the vehicle and had caught. Um, there's a small section between the subframe and the front of the vehicle where the steering mechanism is and where the battery begins. It's about, mm, about that big. I'll show you a picture. And um, these trailer hitches had gotten caught in there and jackknifed up, on, um, up underneath the vehicles and had punctured the quarter inch aluminum plate on the bottom of the battery pack and had damaged one of the cell, um, uh, cell blocks, um, modules if you will, inside the vehicle and it caused it to go thermal. Well, the vehicle immediately detected that uh, there was a problem, had alerted the drivers, they had plenty of time to pull over to the side of the road, call emergency services, and by then, of course, then the batteries had, you know, um, had, had started to go thermal on them. Um, now, Tesla took about a month to figure out what the problem was and how to rectify it, and what they ended up doing was they um, were able to retrofit right at the start of manufacturing, as well as a voluntary recall. Anybody who wanted to come in to get this was a titanium plate that was installed in that little gap that I mentioned, and that solved the problem. In the meantime, uh, before that month was up, um, Tesla had sent out uh, a software update to the vehicle fleet that would, uh, for vehicles with, um, um, uh, with the air ride suspension, uh, with the option in there, um, to, to raise the vehicle up, um, to give them some more clearance when they're driving on the road until they figured out the problem. Of course, you know, um, that was fixed and then things went back to normal at that point. Um, what was interesting, and not a lot of people know this, and I'll show you a couple of very small clips, and I'm sorry about the quality, they're just, you know, GIF images, but during uh, Tesla's internal testing um, for these uh, titanium plates that put on the bottom of the vehicle, they drove over uh, a metal alternator uh, from a gasoline car and a stone paver. And you can see by the GoPro footage, it's pretty low quality, but they absolutely, these titanium plates absolutely obliterated both of these objects. Um, so since they put those titanium plates on all the vehicles, uh, we haven't had a single report of any more battery punctures and stuff. So it was a good proactive thing on their part. Now the big one, everybody's asking about batteries again. Um, there's a lot of uh, noise and fear and uncertainty doubt on the internet about EVs needing batteries, new batteries um, every two or three years. And, and that's not true. Um, and I think it really comes uh, because people are used to having cell phones and they have relatively small batteries in there. And yeah, a small battery, um, like say a, 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 an iPhone 6 or 6S or an Android device, uh, most of them are under 3000 milliamp hours. So when you cycle that battery quite often, yeah, the batteries only really last about uh, 20, uh, two years. Um, however, it's not like the battery completely dies. It's, it's that they lose the ability to keep um, a charge beyond say about 75%. Now on a device, um, you know, with a small battery like a cell phone, 75% uh, charge maximum is pretty noticeable. So that's why people got it in their minds that, oh, you know, an EV battery needs to be changed after two years, and that's not true. Uh, remember, the, the 18650 cell that uh, Tesla is using is about 3600 milliamps, so that's, that's more juice than an iPhone has. And keep in mind, a Model S battery has 7104 of those battery cells. So the rule of the thing here is that the larger the battery, 
the less stress you're going to put on it. So what affects uh, battery degradation? There's three factors that affect battery degradation. One of them is temperature. Uh, temperature in the battery cells has to be maintained. This is why Tesla's battery packs are liquid cooled. They're thermally managed. The second one is voltage. How hard do you ch how high do you charge that battery? Tesla recommends that you charge the battery to 80%. You can go to 100%, but past the 80% up to 100%, it has to do a lot of balancing between those 7,000 cells in the battery pack. So it takes a long time. That's why they really recommend you go to 80%. So the harder you you hit those batteries with more voltage and maximum up to 100 to 100%. It it really affects the chemistry inside in in order to be able to retain um, uh, that high rate of charge. The third factor is the depth of discharge. How far down do you deplete the battery? Now, what happens here is that um, I think most people's mentality is more still in the gasoline age, where you fill up your gas tank, you drive around for like a week or whatever, how long it takes. When your gas tank is almost empty, then you go fill it up. And But that's not how we operate with uh, electronic devices like our cell phones and EVs, is that we use the device basically all day. It may or may not be completely depleted. We go home, we plug it in, the morning you get up and you have a full charge. That's how you should be operating your batteries. So that's the mentality you have to get around. So the rule of, of uh, the rule about batteries here is that the larger the battery pack, that you have on an EV, the less you're going to stress it. Because you're not, even though the battery pack might have, say, 250 mile range, you're not driving 250 miles every day. You're only going, you know, an average person only drives about 50 miles, 40 miles a day. So if you have a large battery pack and you're not charging it to 100% every day and you're not depleting it down to zero, your battery can last ostensibly a long time. And I've done some math here, it's pretty simple. So the average consumer drives about 15,000 miles a year, which is 24,000 kilometers for those on the metric system. Yeah, you have a metric. Um, if, you, if you did a range charge, which is go to 100%, you can easily get 150,000 miles or 24,000 kilometers or about 10 years and still have 72% of the battery capacity still left in the vehicle. And the nice thing about the Tesla batteries is that they're recyclable. So after 70, um, say after 10 years or 15 years or whatever the case may be, now I gave you some pretty hard metrics, not everybody drives those kind of miles, but let's say the battery lasts 10 or 15 years and you still get a 70 to 72% uh, charge rate in the battery. Well, if you turn in the vehicle or you sell it, Tesla can take those batteries out and take the cells out and repurpose them, say for uh, storage, like a, a power pack or a power wall. And then those batteries could last another 10 to 15 years. And at that point, then they're 96% recyclable. Speaking of which, what a lot of people don't realize is that the uh, Gigafactory in Nevada will have a section off um, inside the factory for expressly uh, battery recycling. So Tesla's being end-to-end -end responsible as far as their um, production of the batteries and, and throughout the whole lifetime of the batteries. So that's what I had to say for today. Um, stay tuned and we'll have more information soon on uh, more Tesla and Model 3 information. Thanks for watching.